Okay, Shalom Akim. First and foremost, I want to give all praises and all glory to the true and living power, which is Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Recha, Kadash. Yahweh is the true name of the Heavenly Father. Yahweh Shai is the true name of His only begotten Son. And there's no God beside them. And I want to give double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone who rule well, who've told us his truth to spin Pai Yahweh Bahashem Shai, and honored citations to the elect. Alright, so, you know, I did a, a lesson in transit on my way down to a certain location you know and uh pretty much like an exhortation to use the day of atonement as like a boost all right to begin to uh, uh, uh be more diligent you know or more sincere and so forth but i gotta touch a uh, way more on all right uh, uh, uh on how important this day is as far as the lord forgiving us for our sins you know as well because that's first and foremost and then we can get into uh all right using it as a, as a stepping stone to low will and grow in the spirit so first and foremost the word atonement it means reparation for a wrong or injury in religious context reparation or expiation for sin so as you can see, it says a uh, reparation for a wrong or injury. What's the wrong? Sin. Our sins. Because sin is wrong. And a reparation, of course, is what? Payment. So getting, uh, 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 like it says here, payment, compensation. So so we uh, uh, going as fast, you know, slash a Sabbath. You know, meaning we rest, we don't do any work. Okay, to the best of our ability, of course. You know, but as far as fasting, you gotta fast. You know, but that is the payment to the Lord for our sins to make everything right. Okay, because when you get your reparations, when you get your compensation, when you get your payment, that makes everything right. Okay, so we go on this sin, we have this day of atonement to make everything right with the Lord. Okay, first and foremost. So now this day of atonement is like a it's like a clean slate unto us. You know? The Lord forgives us for our sins. Right? And now we keep it pushing, moving on forward. So let's see how important it is when the Lord forgives you for your sins. And when you get that clean slate. So this is Romans chapter six. Matter of fact, Salakia, let me start off with this. It is wow, it's already here. Right here. Wow. I did not know that this I didn't know what was gonna come up. I was getting ready to search it and it's right here already, man. So this is Wisdom of Solomon, chapter one. And I'll start at verse four. It says, For into a malicious soul, wisdom shall not enter. Malicious meaning what? Uh um wickedness, man. Okay. Being wicked. When you're overly wicked. And what makes you wicked, of course? Sin. When you're sinning too much, when you're willful sinning, that makes you wicked, which makes you uh, malicious. So, man, and brother, uh, war my can't. That's crazy. I mentioned mentioned you in my uh, last lesson, man. You made the beautiful analogy of uh, how, like, uh, 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 pretty much, when you're wicked, I forgot what scripture came out, but it's like likened unto a path that has nothing but thorns in it. So you can't, you're not going to go into a path that's filled with thorns. All right. You know, and shit, sometimes we brothers be going on hikes. If you see a path here, a path here, and that path got thorns, you're not going down there. You're going to go on that path that has less thorns or no thorns. Right, so that's how that's what wisdom is to a nigga. All right, to a malicious soul. So the more and more you we we sin, the more and more thorns begins to grow in that path. And wisdom is what likened to a woman. So if wisdom sees too much thorns there, she ain't gonna go in. But this beautiful day of atonement. 
All right, the day of atonement will be fast. The Lord forgive us for our sins. It's like an unto a clean slate. You know, that's why I seen brothers getting Psalms. I think that was Psalms 51. King David, create a clean heart in me. You know, blot out my transgressions. King David wanted a clean slate, bro. You know, you know he messed up. He was sincerely, uh, uh, uh you know, he sincerely was uh, sorry. He just wanted a clean slate. You know, and that's what like the day of atonement is. So our path is like it's like once again our path has no thorns in it, so to speak. It's a fresh start, man. So we need to be sinning less from here on out. We need to sin less from here on out. Now, of course, the scriptures say the the uh, the creature was made subject unto vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him that subjected the same in hope. You know, so we. We're made, we're subject to sin. We're gonna sin. But we need to sin less. You know, we need to keep more more Sabbaths. Alright? And so and so on and so forth, man. You know, so again, wisdom of Solomon 1 and 4, for into a malicious soul, wisdom shall not enter. Nor dwell in the body that is subject unto sin. See? So go sinning too much, man. All right, sinning too much. Wisdom, if you sinning too much, wisdom ain't gonna dwell with you, man. So what? What happens? So the less you sin, the more wisdom could dwell with you. See, the more you keep in the Sabbath, the more you begin to fast. All right, so on and so forth. The more wisdom can begin to dwell with you. Verse five: For the Holy Spirit of discipline will flee deceit. And remove from thoughts that are without understanding, and will not abide when unrighteousness cometh in. And what's unrighteousness, man? Constantly sinning too much. And it's yo, that's, yo, man, I'm telling you, man, the Lord is so beautiful. You know, one of Apostle recall lessons a while back, he said, "Yes, we are supposed to keep the Lord to the best of our ability, man. Yes. All right. You know." IUIC is right in that aspect. They all about the laws, the laws, the laws, but they need to be more about faith, faith, faith as well. They don't got a balance, you know. But yes, we are supposed to be keeping the laws to the best of our ability. Okay, so let me jump over to uh, Romans six and twelve. It says, "Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that ye should obey in the lust thereof." See, so you don't want. Well, we don't want sin to reign in our mortal bodies, man. Okay? We don't want sin to just keep stacking up, stacking up, stacking up, stacking up in our mortal bodies. You know? In the flesh. You don't want flesh and, and rain. Let me go into that word, rain. So, yeah, we got to keep these low statues commitments to the best of our ability. And another beautiful thing is, oh, man... Oh, like the brother, I was talking to brother Kahan, um, and he mentioned the scripture, charity covereth a multitude of sins. Another scripture is, uh, uh, pretty much, uh, alms is like, uh, alms is like, as water is to a, a fire, so is alms to sin. So that's another thing, we need to be paying tithes, man, you know? We may forget. I know I forget sometimes, but I'm, you know, hey, hey, you, you know what I'm saying? You ain't supposed to blow the chump, whatever, but we, we got to uh, jump back on that, man, all right? Because that'll clear up some of those thorns, so to speak. Paying tides, that'll clear up some of those thorns on, 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 on your path, so to speak, so that wisdom could come through. So this is rain. It says to be king, to exercise kingly power. See, so you don't want sin... To be king over you. And sin coincides with what? The flesh. You don't want flesh. It's a, it's a, it's a spiritual war going on. And our, and our own bodies. And our mortal bodies man. Between what? The spirit and the flesh. That's why Yahweh Shai said. Watch and pray. For the spirit is willing. But the flesh is weak. So what's sitting on your throne? What's sitting on the throne of your temple? Is it the flesh? Or is it the spirit? Because if you're subject unto sin. Alright, well, if you're subject onto willful sin, if you keep willfully sinning, you keep willfully being a nigga, 
then guess what? The flesh is sitting on the throne of your own temple. Like so many people we know, two-thirds. But we want the spirit to seriously be sitting on, on a throne in our temple. We want the spirit to be reigning in our mortal bodies, not the flesh. See, so it says from the Greek word here, to be king, to exercise kingly power, to reign. See? Woo! Number two. Metaphorically, to exercise the highest influence, to control. So what's controlling you? What's controlling your mortal body? Is it the spirit or is it the flesh? How do you even determine? All right. Through sin. Okay. Through who you're giving your time to the most. Either the flesh has the highest influence, which is going to make you do things like be in the world, yo. You know what I'm saying? Please in the world, man. What they think about me. They already think bad about me. I'm not going to do that then. Who? What, what has the highest influence? Or is it the spirit? Yeah, I'll buy some shot. Shoot, I'm, I'm going to go this way. I'm going to do that. It says to control. What, what controls you the most? A lot of freaking niggas, man, is controlled by their flesh. It's controlled by the world. It's controlled by sin. All right, so guess what? And the reason I'm bringing this out is because now we have a clean slate. We have a clean slate once again, man. You know, whatever was uh, on the throne, if the flesh was on the throne, it's like the spirit is back on the throne. And now we keep it moving forward, man, from here on out. Verse 13. So if you was a nigga smoking weed, whatever, whatever, quit it, bro. Because right now we have a chance. We have a clean slate. We have the spirit sitting on the throne. We got to keep it that way. Verse 13, and I'm ended off, man. Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin. Okay? But yield yourselves unto the most high. All right? Begin to keep the Sabbath. Begin to uh, uh, do things that please the Lord. Says, as those that are alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness unto the most high for sin shall not have dominion over you see because what happens when sin has dominion over you wisdom can no longer uh, dwell with you but now we got a clean slate for ye are not under the law but under grace what then right but, but we're under grace that's the thing man and that's another big deal this is where IUIC need to step 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 up more and speak about grace that Yahweh Shai paid for us, man. But at the same time, what then? Shall we sin? Because we are not under the law, but under grace. God forbid. Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey? A lot of niggas yield themselves servants to obey the world, the flesh, man. Satan. Ultimately, and they don't even know. It. His servants ye are to whom ye obey. His servants ye are to whom ye obey. See? See? Oh, man, I, I feel that true, but wifey would never let me go out on Saturdays and teach this. Well, you just yield yourself as a servant unto Satan, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. See? All right. But the most high be think that ye were the servants of sin when we was in the world when we was niggas. But ye have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered you, being then made free from sin, ye became the servants of righteousness. Alright, so that's pretty much it, man. You know, Lord Wollens is edifying, man. Alright. Uh 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 you know, so the main points, you know, uh try to sin less and wisdom will suffer with you more. And what happens when you get wisdom? Wisdom bring it to a kingdom at the end of the day to sum it up. Wisdom does so much for you that at the end of the day, you could just say it brings you to the kingdom. Right? So how important is it to, to so that we don't sin as much? So, Lord willing, this is edifying. Hey, man. You know, have a have a blessed day of atonement. All right? With that, I'm going to say Shalom.